cut the chit chat and tell them how much we want. As hip hop and film began to collide in the early 90s, South Central LA had made a name for itself in both industries. Similar to the stories told in rap songs during those times, movies that were set in inner city neighborhoods of Southern California portrayed daily lives of gang members, drug dealers, and a great deal of violent imagery. Three young men in their early 20s sought to highlight a different perspective of life in the hoods of LA. These men were neighborhood friends who became known as Ice Cube, F. Gary Gray, and DJ Pooh. The trio would come together in 1993 to co-write and direct the movie we all know and love, Friday. Their goal was to show the world that the hood was not just bloodshed and tragedy, it was also fun and comical. This would not be the first time that Cube, Gary, and DJ Pooh would collaborate on a project together. Gary Gray directed the video for Ice Cube's It Was A Good Day, to which DJ Pooh actually produced the track for in 1993. Friday was a huge moment in DJ Pooh's career as the film grossed millions and served as his film writing debut. But before he became a writer, actor, and director, it was his early work as a DJ and producer that helped shape the identity of Los Angeles rap as it battled with New York to become a hip-hop mecca. He's low-key a hip-hop legend, so comedy and music fans alike, sit back, relax, and get to know DJ Pooh. Born as Mark Jordan in Inglewood, California, the guy we know as Red from Friday got his start in music as a DJ for the groundbreaking West Coast DJ crew known as Uncle Jam's Army. He made his mark as a producer for the likes of LL Cool J, Ice Cube, King T, Tupac, Snoop Dogg, and many more. He would go on to be a staple in some of the biggest moments of the LA rap scene. Uncle Jam's army laid the foundation for what West Coast rap would become in the early 80s. In 1983, DJ Pooh joined the crew along with DJ Bobcat, Egyptian Lover, Ice-T, and more. The crew would pack out huge venues like the LA Sports Arena with over 10,000 people, sometimes with no headliners, no rappers, just DJs. Being in front of all those people inspired me to get deeper into the music business beyond dance promotion parties. DJ Pooh recalls one of the craziest moments while DJing with Uncle Jam's Army. We did a show with LL Cool J, The Real Roxanne, and Curtis Blow. In between the acts, we would DJ and I was on the turntables when a massive fucking fight broke out and it was complete chaos. I just kept spinning until Roger stopped me and announced to the crowd that we were going to stop playing until things calmed down. I was sitting behind the turntables watching 7,000 people in a super panic left and right. Guys were getting stumped and it was real crazy. That stands out in my mind because that was what put a damper on the whole Uncle Jam's army thing because people were afraid to come out and party. We had the terrible gang scenario that was growing in LA. The emergence of gangster rap and violence in music lyrics and at rap shows led to the disbanding of Uncle Jam's army in 1988. DJs around that time began making the switch to a producer role, including Dr. Dre, who is a member of a similar DJ crew on another side of town. DJ Pooh credits Dr. Dre with his transition from DJ to producer. The two met at a record store booth where Dr. Dre would make mixtapes. DJ Pooh was introduced to the ins and outs of music production through the future president of Death Row Records. I then had the opportunity to show some of my work to Russell Simmons out in New York. I went to Def Jam with a cassette tape of all of the tracks that I had put together. I even went out there with the drum machine that Dr. Dre was using. So I went to New York and had a meeting, and they listened to my tracks and they liked it. From there, DJ Pooh joined the LA Posse and would go on to be signed to Def Jam producing LL Cool J's double platinum album, Bigger and Deffer. For the next 10 years, he would go on to produce critically acclaimed albums like Tupac's All Eyes on Me in 1995, Snoop Dogg's The Dog Father in 1996, and much more. In 1997, with the solidified top dog role in L.A. rap, he launched a solo career with the album Bad News Travels Fast. When asked why he decided to step back from hip-hop, DJ Pooh told all hip-hop, East Coast, West Coast thing drove me away from hip-hop. I remember being in New York shooting a video for the Dog Pound's New York, New York, which I produced and we were shot at. The song was never intended as a diss, but once that war started, the song was looked on as a diss. Shooting a video for that in the middle of New York wasn't the safest or smartest thing to do at that time. I told myself that I had to take a step back from hip hop for a minute. I love hip hop, but I love myself and I love my family too. DJ Pooh made appearances in some of Ice Cube's music videos, including playing all three Mac characters in Who's the Mac. His comedic performances in these videos made him stand out in a different light than what we saw behind a turntable or a drum machine. This was his first experience in video production, and the fun that he and Ice Cube had together on set 
made them consider making movies together. I learned a lot of the script writing process from Ice Cube and John Singleton. He had set us down and showed us the ropes and the basic structure of screenplay writing. So Ice Cube and DJ Pooh discussed story ideas and decided to try writing the script. While Ice Cube was on tour promoting his albums and Pooh was working on various projects in LA, they would fax each other drafts on what eventually became the fan favorite, Friday. Friday chronicles a day in the life of Craig Jones who had lost his job and gets high for the first time. As co-writer, DJ Pooh knew he wanted to tell a story involving weed. We came up with the rough idea of a movie that would take place in a day, a regular Friday in the hood. We started building around that. Me and Craig grew up around the same neighborhood, so we knew a lot of the same people. We started thinking about people we knew, what was going on, stuff that happened in our lives growing up, and just laughing and clowning about a bunch of different scenarios. Every hood has a Debo or Felicia. With movies like Boys in the Hood and Menace to Society being the largest portrayal of black neighborhoods in LA, both DJ Pooh and Ice Cube aimed to show a side of the hood that wasn't so savage. Ice Cube told Complex, everybody was looking at our neighborhood like it was hell on earth, like the worst place you can grow up in America. And I'm like, why? I mean, I knew it was crazy around where I grew up, but we had fun in the hood. I was a fan of Cheech and Chong movies, of In Living Color, Robert Townsend's Hollywood Shuffle. We watched them all the time and laughed at them. DJ Pooh is not only a super producer, but also a fool and crazy as hell. We in the studio laughing all day, smoking weed, and we were just like, yo, we need to create something to show how the hood really is from our vantage point. That's how it started. Originally, DJ Pooh was supposed to play Smokey, Craig's drug dealing best friend who couldn't stop getting high off his own supply. The character mimicked a lot of DJ Pooh's real life experiences. I sold weed when I was young and was unsuccessful because I was also a connoisseur. I'd be like, I'm just gonna smoke this sack right here, but if I break this sack down, I can get the money back. It was a horrible idea. Since the project was funded by New Line Cinema, who felt that DJ Pooh hadn't had enough screen experience for the role, they ended up casting Chris Tucker, who would eventually go on to star in the Rush Hour series from this breakout role. Although the character Red had a smaller role, DJ Pooh took it in stride and made it his own. Red got jacked and beat up by the neighborhood bully Debo, a scene that gave us the famous improvised line from Chris Tucker, you got knocked the fuck out. We all remember the hilarious run back to the car after being so distraught from getting this chain snatched because his grandmama gave him that chain. It was a small role, but it was a very memorable character in the movie. I go to Disneyland with my kids and people walk up to me and say, you got knocked the fuck out. I don't take it personal because obviously they are showing their support for the movie. I was honored to have our low budget project do what it did. With a modest budget of two and a half million dollars, Friday went on to gross $27 million worldwide. What started as an idea between two homeboys became a cult classic and the first in the series of three. DJ Pooh would not be a part of the next two Friday films. At the time, DJ Pooh felt wronged by Ice Cube and their management by how things played out with their movie as co-writers. We were young guys, so I took it personal. I put the blame on Cube, and that's something that I probably shouldn't have done. After an Ice Cube diss song, Woo Woo, featuring Cam made his way to DJ Pooh's solo album, the two would not work together again and didn't speak for some time after. But the LA Natives film career did not stop there. As the new millennium approached, DJ Pooh made his directorial debut with Three Strikes, a comedy surrounding the controversial Three Strike Law that passed during that time. The film starred Brian Hook, his Friday castmate Faison Love, and David Allen Greer. And in 2001, he reconnected with Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg for The Wash, a modern twist to the 1970 film Car Wash. DJ Pooh's career proves to be ever evolving as he dived into the world of gaming as a writer and character developer for Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. He also brought on rapper Young Melee to play the game's character, CJ. That opportunity came because I am a gamer and had interest in it. I was a fan of Rockstar Games and the Grand Theft Auto series. I spoke to some people at Rockstar and they told me that they were thinking about bringing the series out west. They wanted to deal with people that knew and understood the Los Angeles scene and that also had script writing ability. I was blessed to get an opportunity to see all the processes of video game making. DJ Pooh has recently made a cameo as himself in the game and is also the DJ on the West Coast Classics radio station. From music to movies to video games, Mark Jordan aka DJ Pooh has had possibly the most quiet yet impressive careers you'll ever see. Spanning over three decades, 
His resume entails doing what he loves, making people laugh and adding joy to people's lives. No matter your definition of success, that sounds like it. A trailblazer of multiple lanes, a comedic and musical genius, we want to give DJ Pooh his flowers for being an undeniable icon. For Comedy Hype News, I'm Travis Adonis.